Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and looking at the market here, everything seems pretty flat, but it shouldn't be flat because of some of the things I'm going to cover today. Um, one BlackRock, Coinbase BlackRock announcement, that's a big one. But let's get going. Um, I got a lot of interesting things to show you. The first one from Link to my sponsor, big news for Zipline. NASA recently signed a Space Act agreement with Zipline to pursue a future vision of U.S. aviation that includes delivery drones and air taxis. This is a monster announcement. This is the, to my knowledge, this is the only commercial drone company that there is right now. And it is on link to at 40 bucks right now. And you can actually apply a thousand dollar link bucks to it when you, when you buy it there. So that's a big deal right there. Now let's move forward. Does anybody remember this guy? I don't even know how you say his name. Payush Gupta, CEO of the DBS group. He was at Ripple Swell in 2019 in Singapore. I was there. I saw him on stage. Now, how is he significant? Well, this clip was put out today. This is a guy named Sim Lim of DBS Bank. Listen to what he says. Let me hit the refresh so you can listen to what he says. Right? What do you see in 10 years? Okay, that's also a very tough question. Uh, I don't have the answer to that, but I'll tell you how I will approach it. Uh, one money as we know it today, and the U.S. as a reserve currency, I think will be stressed. You know, governments that are not aligned with U.S. policy would start wondering, should I buy, should I keep U.S. dollars, should I keep U.S. treasuries? And if I don't agree with U.S., would U.S. then weaponize it against me? So I think that question is in most government mind. Okay, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm running any government, that will come uh, uh, to mind. Uh, a currency being backed by commodities, you know, a basket of commodities, commodities I think would be best. But I don't know if you'll go that way. That's that, and I mean, China has been pushing for that. Now, we have cryptocurrency today, we have uh, stable coin today, we have central bank digital currency today. So there's a lot of question, you know, uh, is there going to be a change with the future of money look different? Now, I don't know the answer, but I do know that status quo as we know it, I think won't stay, you know, given all that has happened. Uh, it won't stay. It won't stay. Yeah, I won't think. Uh, I don't believe it will stay the same. How does it move forward? I don't know. Now, the third. Uh, but I was I was wondering, and maybe I'm just being too simplistic, but it could almost be like the EQ, which was preceded the euro, right? It was a tray weighted basket yes, of yes, currencies. Yes. Couldn't you devolve or evolve to a, a, a cryptocurrency that we could agree on with you know ten of the leading currencies of the world, and that's our instrument? I haven't thought about that. I, I don't know, uh, to be honest with you. I don't know. Uh, if it's tie again... Now listen to what he says here. ...basket of currency, uh, currencies, I'm not so sure. If it's tied against a basket of commodities, maybe. Uh, tied against a basket of commodities. Because I don't think anyone wants to be hold, beholden to any uh, other countries or block of countries. It now, I don't know why, but when I listened to that, I was reminded of a clip and I was just reminded in several ways this morning. I was actually talking to someone this morning and they reminded me of this clip. Many of you have never seen this clip. If you haven't seen this clip, you need to. This is Greg Kidd, who's a billionaire. He was one of the first 10 people at Ripple. Now, he went and actually worked for Ripple. Now think about this. Here's a guy that's a billionaire and thought enough of what Ripple was doing when he heard about it to go there and ask them, say, I'll do anything, you can let me work there and I'll help you in your regulatory department, whatever I need to do to work, to actually work for you guys. And he went and made sure he was in that place. Listen to what he says. Remember when I was playing this the is when I interviewed him a couple of years ago. And somebody described what Ripple was to me and I heard, felt like Moses coming down and saying, well, there's this concept of a universal ledger, one ledger for all the value in the world. And it has both the new form of value, but it also has a representation of the old forms of value. And that sweeping statement and scope, I mean, I didn't think I was going to go back into the workforce. That's probably uh, the last time I, you know, in the last 20, 
20 or 30 years where I said, well, I got to go, I got to go down and meet those guys and talk them into giving me a job because I want to be part of that grand experiment. It is so here's a billionaire that says Ripple is equal to Moses coming down. And there is still some Ripple available on the um, link to platform. This is Moses coming down right here. So a guy, guy a lot smarter than I am says that this is Moses coming down. And in my opinion, nobody's going to be able to get it soon. <laughs> the link to that, by the way, to link to will be in the top of the description of this video. Okay. If you want to get you some Moses coming down. All right. Now, um, this is a big deal right here, folks, because this, write it down. This is the first real big, these guys, these guys manage like over seven trillion dollars blackrock okay trillion with a t these guys right here have just announced says we're proud to announce a partnership with blackrock coinbase blackrock's a lot aladdin clients will now have direct access to crypto markets through coinbase prime which that's their custody they're going to use coinbase prime custody um, they've played a central role in developing this um, BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager to provide institutional clients of Aladdin, BlackRock's end-to-end -end investment management platform, direct access to crypto. Then down here it says, built for institutions, Coinbase Prime integrates advanced agency trading, custody, prime financing, staking, and staking infrastructure. I want to go open a Coinbase Prime account. That's what I'm thinking. Because I think they allow investment in XRP too, folks, because that is accredited investors, right? I think I might look into a Coinbase Prime account if it's good enough for BlackRock, if I can show them, I mean, geez, this is big, but I'm gonna show you, there's folks, I've been in this since 2013, but I've been doing this channel since May, 2018. And I want you to know, when I saw this, a lot of things started coming to mind. Here's the first, let me remind you, Robbie Michnick was at Ripple. He helped do the XRP valuation. He was a Stanford student. He helped put together a valuation for XRP two or three, maybe three or four years ago now, with Susan Athey, who's on Ripple's board. Okay, she's a Stanford professor. Listen to what he said, and I don't remember when this was, um, but he says in this clip that all these got the big boys are looking for is custody. Well, today's announcement is they're here, folks. The herd's here. That's what this means. It's still custody, but it's how do you build bulletproof custody solutions that are institutional grade that large FIs can actually get comfortable FIs with? FIs, financial institutions. Financial institutions. So the difference is the threshold is way higher in the latter case because I know that I'm not going to wake up tomorrow and find out that my Apple shares got hacked and went missing from the DTCC. And the industry, what is the DTCC? That is basically the depository that keeps track of who owns what shares in the U.S. market. And that's the threshold that the crypto and blockchain industry is going to need to get to, whether that's for traditional crypto or for tokenized financial assets. Okay. Folks, don't underestimate this. Look, people put, we, we put the word massive on our thumbnails all the time. This time, the thumbnail is 1,000% deserving of the word massive. So I'll put massive on the thumbnail because of this this is that big of a deal and i want to remind you craig phillips who is right here on ripple's board of directors okay there's susan athey by the way let me read you about craig phillips okay for those of you that don't know all right craig phillips was with the treasury department first but before that between 2008 and 2017 mr phillips was managing director of blackrock where he founded and led the financial markets advisory group a global risk consulting practice that served over 200 unique clients in 32 countries and booked revenue in ex excess of 1.6 billion. FMA oversaw in excess of 180 billion in ad of advisory assets under management. Mr. Phillips led the team that represented the Federal Reserve Bank of New York and the management of assets in the maiden lane vehicles. He also led the teams that performed diagnostic of the banking system in both Ireland and Greece in support of financial assistance programs by IMF and ECB. That sounds like systemic risk to me. And there he is, board member at Ripple. Go figure. Now, the final thing that this BlackRock announcement, I don't know why it reminded me of this, 
but this is one of my favorite things since I got on this channel. Remember Bob Way that came around um, and was was talking about, he like showed up in social media and talked about XRP and Ripple for about a year almost, okay? Then he disappeared. Well, this is a tweet I made back February 12th, 2021. People from Goldman Sachs, CME Group, BlackRock, Swift, et cetera, joined this little startup in Silicon Valley. Why? Because I think I know the answer why. This was Bob Way on his link. I think this was his LinkedIn account. Listen to this if you've never heard it. Several people left fancy jobs and joined Ripple because of, I paraphrase, if we capture even a minor fraction of the international payments market, market do you know the... Do you know the value XRP will need to have to support that? Do the math. Really, really big trade number divided by 100 billion XRP equals wow. Those sort of conversations always buoyed my spirits and made me smile. But really, they, they also gave me anxiety and made me remember that my job was to make sure we don't all F this up. That's from Bob Way, who was one of the first 10 employees with Greg Kidd at Ripple, folks. This is not our imagination. Now, this is K uh, Kristen Smith of the Blockchain As Association. Same Kristen Smith who has never done anything or her organization to promote, to help Ripple or in the, in the SEC lawsuit or to help John Deaton in his lawsuit against the SEC for overreach. Um, you're starting to see uh, more efforts to, to regulate this. That could be a very good thing uh, for some, um, maybe less of a good thing for others. Where do you stand? Well, listen, I think we're very excited at the Blockchain Association that we have bipartisan, bicameral members of Congress that are wanting to think about and tackle these issues. I think that the bill that was... Anyway, it's not a coincidence that CNBC, who never covers Eastgate, never covers John Deaton, never covers the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit. It's not a coincidence that they are having her on. They're obviously friends. So all of these friends are in it together to cover up what the truth is, which is what we're covering, okay? They're all complicit. Then there was this, James Philan put this out, that Ripple, another uh, motion, Ripple defendants request permission to serve non-party subpoenas to authenticate videos of seven SEC officials um, and so basically, Jeremy Hogan lays it out. Ripple simply wants to authenticate seven videos of SEC employees giving speeches, and the SEC is messing around again with it. The SEC played games in responding originally last year. Authentication is standard stuff in litigation and should not be this difficult. In other words, and if I was the, I'm, I have to assume, because if I'm Ripple's attorneys, this is my favorite guy ever from the SEC, and I would be trying to authentic. I think my understanding of this is that all that Ripple's asking is the SEC says, "Yeah, this is Robert Jackson Nothing from the in SEC." The nature of a cryptocurrency, the nature of the asset itself, that gives you pause. It's the structure of the markets those assets are traded in, rather than features of the asset itself. Is well, that's that exactly right. That's very fair. Okay, now that's important because what he, what Robert Jackson just acknowledged there is that the asset itself is not a security, ex but that's what the SEC is trying to say. But here's a commissioner on stage saying the asset itself is not a security, it's how it's being traded that could or could not be. Let me add one more. Uh, about crypto in particular, the other question we face that is very challenging is, is this a security and to what degree is it a security under the securities laws? And I think, I'll be honest, I think my colleagues have done a great job about this. Mm. Um, the director of our division of corporation finance is a man named Bill Hinman who did an, he, he gave a speech where he laid out here. While you listen to this, tell me if this is a, this, remember, when I found this video, this is back when the SEC was saying it was his personal opinion, and he, in a signed affidavit, said that it was his personal opinion. And then we had to go and dig up all these things to prove it wasn't his personal opinion. Then later they changed it and said, it. no, it was market guidance. But at this time, when we found this video, I found this one back around August. At this time, they were saying it was his personal opinion, and we knew that was a lie think about this um, and gave a set of principles that the market can follow in understanding here's how you know if you have a security or if you don't now we have an answer to every particular question um, but we've answered a lot and I'll say one more thing about this 
early in this market, some lawyers out on the West Coast, in my view, got out ahead of their skis. They gave advice that these things were not securities. And candidly, um, my reaction as a lawyer and human was reading the, that advice, it was uh, aggressive. Mm. As a result of that, the regulator has a job to do, which is to say to the bar, you know the principles here, you know the rules of the game, and you should apply them carefully and faithfully to the advice you're giving. And I think uh, we, Hinman's speech and, and the chairman's work in this has moved the market forward a great deal. So they were trying to move the market forward a great deal. They lied about it at that time, but now they're telling the truth. Now, another video that I think that, um, that Ripple needs to get their hot hands on is this one that we keep bringing up, the Tech GC Summit. There's Bill Hinman right there on stage with an Andres and Horwitz employee. We need to get that. Nobody's ever seen that video to my knowledge. I still think we'll, we'll get our hot hands on it soon. Don't you worry. Um, uh, David Schwartz got in an interesting dialogue on, on Twitter. Is Jed one-fourth of Satoshi? Is Arthur, Arthur Brito one-fourth of Satoshi? And David Schwartz says, I know of no reason he couldn't be, but that doesn't mean he is. There's really no publicly known reason that I couldn't be other than the fact that I've said I'm not. But I admit, if I was, I'd probably say I wasn't. So it's hard to argue that you should believe me. I mean, what a what a classic, what a classic write-up right there. So this got me to thinking, and because I, I was thinking about say, Michael Saylor and all this, and all these people that are telling people to invest in Bitcoin and all this stuff, and not supposedly not knowing who Satoshi is, and I said, well, they, somebody needs to start selling Satoshi insurance then, because. You need that insurance policy, and all these people should be willing to buy that insurance policy just in case an insurance that, okay, what if Satoshi pops up one day and says, I'm going to dump all my Bitcoin? Or if they um, have some kind of, who knows what they could do. But if they showed up, if Satoshi showed up at all and can prove that that's their wallet, remember, this would completely obliterate Bitcoin as a commodity because You've, then you've got the third party issuer that you supposedly don't have right now. So these, somebody needs to create Satoshi insurance. <laughs> I'm not joking. All right. Crypto well, nearly 5 million has been drained from crypto exchange ZB.com. Um, it's in an exit scam by insiders. I don't know about that. I'm just, that's what they're saying. The firm claimed they were the most secure exchange in the world and was owned by none other than Binance CEO. CZ Binance's brother. I don't know about that either, but these exchanges are getting hacked. So I'm going to remind you again to go get a Ledger Nano S. The link will be in the top of the description. In fact, the people at Ledger emailed me this morning and they gave me a 10% discount coupon code. I put that coupon code in the top of the description of this video so you can go and get 10% off either one of these in any color, I think. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family that there's 10% off on Ledger Nano S right now.